drywall finishing video for Mennonite Disaster Service. The following information is one way to do drywall finishing with minimal sanding. It is our intent to show you, the MDS volunteer, the basics of drywall finishing. It is important to realize that finishing drywall is a multi-step process spanning three or more days. Your first step in doing this right is obtaining the patience needed. Develop patience and learn a few basics and you may surprise yourself with the quality of your work. Drywall tools for the beginner. You will need the following drywall tools to tape and finish drywall. Mud pan, 4 inch steel knife, 5 inch steel knife, 10 inch steel knife, this is probably your most important knife for finishing the job properly, 10 inch to 12 inch concave trowel, corner tool, if using this be very careful not to put too much mud in the corner, I prefer to use the knives. A paper tape, paper covered corner bead, if not available use metal corner bead, bucket of water and mud mixer for wetting down mud and cleaning tools, mud pre-mixed multi-purpose, hand or pole sander and sponge block, 150 grit to 220 grit to be used carefully and sparingly. Now several tips before we start. Number one, drywall must be ready. Great drywall finishes begin with superior hanging jobs. The drywall must be tight against the wall studs or the ceiling joists. All screws need to be countersunk just enough to where they do not tear the paper. There need to be enough fasteners. I like to see screws every 16 inches on walls and every 12 inches on center on ceilings. Tapered seams should be tight. Corner joints or other joints may have a gap of approximately a quarter inch. A tight seam is best, but a slight gap is acceptable. Number two, mix the mud. Most people use pre-mixed mud in a bucket or a box. This mud is simply too stiff to use. You need to add a little water and whip the mud up to the consistency of creamy cake icing. It must be lump free. Number three, finishing order. Do all the tape on flat seams first and run the tape to within one half inch of the corners. Then do the inside corners so that this tape overlaps the flat seam tape. Finally install all metal or paper corner bead. Now you're ready to fill. Step number one, surface preparation. Make sure all screws are set below the surface. There is absolutely no way to finish a surface properly if a screw is sticking up since the knife will always hit this bump. You should run a knife over all screws. If the knife clicks a screw head, the screw must be set in further. Also, do not rupture the paper surface by setting the screw too deep. If you do, install another screw nearby within an inch or so. If any screws have been backed out, ensure that you press the hole that was left using the handle of your 4 inch knife. This indentation will likely be close to the holding screw and you can cover it in the same pass. It is also good practice to V the butt joints. A butt joint is where two pieces of drywall meet in the same plane and have no indentation. Using a sharp knife, cut a V into the joint that is about a quarter inch across the top. What we're doing is cutting off the paper that often protrudes slightly and makes the butt joint harder to hide. Step 2. Installing the tape and the corner bead. Regular and butt joint. If the gap between pieces is more than a quarter inch, you should fill it before beginning. Place mud on the joint at a width slightly more than the width of the tape. Make sure all the surfaces where the tape will be placed is covered with an ample supply of mud. Leave no bare spots. Don't worry if there is little excess. Place the tape on the mud, covering the joint. Center the tape over the joint. Hold the tape at the very bottom and start drawing the 4 inch knife up tightly against the tape at about a 45 degree angle. The mud should run out the sides onto the knife. This takes some practice. Don't press out all the mud. The mud is the glue that holds the tape to the drywall. Ensure there are no bumps or pockets of mud underneath the tape. 
inside corner joint. If the gap between pieces is more than a quarter inch, you should fill it before beginning. Place adequate mud on each side and the corner itself so there will be no voids or bare spots when the paper is applied. The mud should be applied about 2 inches wide on each side of the corner. Fold the tape and apply to the corner by hand. Press the inside of the corner in as far as possible to avoid any pockets. Draw your 4 inch knife up and down each side of the corner applying pressure to squeeze out mud from under the tape. Get as close as possible to the inside of the corner without ripping the tape. You are really just doing the same thing here as you do when applying tape to a regular joint. You are just doing it on two sides. If the tape starts to bunch up a little, you've been pressing too hard too soon. When this happens, pull the tape up or down to get rid of the slack. Outside corner. Obtain metal outside corner bead or paper covered outside corner bead long enough to cover the entire corner. Cut to length. For paper corner bead, apply 2 to 3 inches of mud to both sides of the corner, top to bottom. Place corner beads so that the top touches the ceiling. Using your hand, set the bead into the corner starting from the bottom and sliding your hand up to the top. Mud will squeeze out the side. Run your 4 inch knife from bottom to top, striking off the excess mud. Check your set on the corner bead by placing your knife perpendicular to the bead and against the wall. There should be an even gap on both sides of the bead that you will fill with mud in the next step. If the gap needs adjusting, simply push the bead in the direction it needs to go. Then run your knife up both sides again. Step 3. First fill coat. Ensure all mud is dry from installing the tape and corner bead previously. Use the 10 inch knife and scrape down any mud that is causing the surface to not be level for the next coat. Often I use two hands on the tool to exert the pressure needed. The art of taping drywall is completely dependent on a level surface to draw the knife down on the subsequent coats. We want to avoid as much sanding as possible. The regular and butt joint. Place ample mud over the tape to a width of about 6 inches. This will extend just slightly beyond the recessed area if it is not a butt joint. It's okay to place on more mud than needed. What's not okay is to leave more on than you should. Draw down the surface with a 10 inch knife or concave trowel. Hold the trowel at an angle closer to 60 degrees and place pressure on the trowel as you draw down or up keeping the trowel in motion as you draw. Try to accomplish this in a single steady but solid pass and avoid getting a washboard surface. At this point you may be tempted to stop applying more coats since you seem to have filled in the recessed area and the surface is fairly level. This is one of the most common errors. The drywall will continue to shrink for months after it is painted and you will see a well-defined valley. You need more coats. Inside corner joint. Using the 4 inch knife, scrape down the surface on each side of the corner. There must not be any bumps. The surface must be level for the next coats. Use the 4 inch knife to place a 2 to 3 inch wide coat of mud on one side of the corner. Draw the knife up the entire length, exerting enough pressure to make a thin, uniform coat that is 4 inches wide. You do only one side of the corner at a time. If using the corner tool, you may do both sides 
but great care must be taken not to build up the corner too much. In the final end, you only want 1 16th inch of mud to cover the tape. Outside corner. Apply mud to the corner, filling in the depressed area from the corner to about 4 inches from the corner on each side of the corner. You will need lots of mud. Use your 10 inch knife to draw up the mud using the corner as a guide. If there are drag marks or voids, don't fret since you will fill these in when you apply more coats. Screw holes. Using the 4 inch knife, apply enough mud to fill the screw indentation going in one direction. Then immediately pull the knife across the same screw in the other direction, applying firm pressure. That screw is now done for the first time. Move on to the next. Step 4 Second fill coat. Ensure all the mud is dry from step 3. Use the 10 inch knife to level out any mud sticking up or fix a washboard surface. To deal with a washboard surface, draw the knife perpendicular to the ridges and keep scraping till the ridges are gone. If you hold the knife almost perpendicular to the wall, you can scrape off non-level spots quite well. Keep the surface level. Don't sand, just plain don't sand at all at this point. Regular and butt joint. Apply another coat that is about 8 inches wide. Use ample amounts of mud. Draw down the surface with a 10 inch knife or concave trowel. Hold the trowel at an angle closer to 60 degrees and place pressure on the trowel as you draw down or up, keeping the trowel in motion as you draw. Try to accomplish this in a single steady but solid pass and avoid getting a washboard surface. Inside corner joint. Using the 4 inch knife, scrape down the surface on each side of the corner. There must not be any bumps. The surface must be level for the next coats. Use the 4 inch knife to place a 2 to 3 inch wide coat of mud on side 2 of the corner. Draw the knife up the entire length, exerting enough pressure to make a thin, uniform coat that is 4 inches wide. Outside corner. Apply mud to the corner, filling in the depressed area from the corner to about 6 inches from the corner on each side of the corner. Use your 10 inch knife to draw down the mud using the corner as a guide. Screw holes. With your 4 inch knife, scrape off any mud sticking up around the screw. Using the 4 inch knife, apply mud to fill the screw indentation going in one direction. Then immediately pull the knife across the same screw in the other direction, applying firm pressure. Step number 5 Third fill coat. Ensure that all mud again is dry from step 4. Use the 10 inch knife to level out any mud sticking up or fix the washboard surface. Keep the surface level. Don't sand. Just plain don't sand at all at this point. Regular and butt joint. Apply a coat that is about 8 inches wide on each side of the original pass. Draw down the surface with a 10 inch knife. You are filling in the area between the built up original passes and the flat drywall on each side. You must apply firm, steady pressure to avoid washboard.
Inside Corner Joint Using the 5 inch knife, scrape down the surface on each side of the corner. Use the 5 inch knife to place a 4 to 5 inch wide coat of mud on side 1 of the corner. Draw the knife up the entire length, exerting enough pressure to make a thin uniform coat that is about 5 inches wide. Outside Corner Apply mud to the corner, filling in the depressed area from the corner to about 8 inches from the corner on each side of the corner. Use your 10 inch knife to draw down the mud using the corner as a guide. Screw holes. With your 4 inch knife, scrape off any mud sticking up around the screw. Using the 4 inch knife, apply mud to fill the screw indentation the same as previous steps. Step 6 The fourth fill coat. Ensure all mud is dry from step 5, the third fill coat. Use the 10 inch knife to level out any mud sticking up or fix a washboard surface. Keep the surface level. Don't sand. Just plain don't sand at all at this point. Regular and butt joint. Apply a coat that is about 8 inches wide in the middle of the original pass. Draw down the surface with a 10 inch knife. This coat is filling in any minor indentations. You must apply firm steady pressure to avoid washboard and leave very little mud on the joint. Using the 5 inch knife, scrape down the surface on each side of the corner. Use the 5 inch knife to place a 4 to 5 inch wide coat of mud on side 2 of the corner. Draw the knife up the entire length, exerting enough pressure to make a thin, uniform coat that is 5 inches wide. Step 7. The Light of Truth Knock off any surface imperfections. Dust or vacuum the surface. Then get a lamp or trouble light, the light of truth, and shine it at a low angle. You will see any imperfections, perhaps more than you care to see. Fill in any drag marks, air pockets, or other imperfections with a small amount of thinned mud applied and drawn down tightly with either knife. I like to use the 4 inch knife if possible since I can exert more pressure and leave as little mud on the wall as possible. At this point the smaller amounts of mud will dry very quickly within minutes. If you are seeing faint washboard like waves even after knocking down the surface, you can remedy this nicely by applying a very thin coat of mud drawn perpendicular to the waves. This is much better than trying to sand the surface level. When dry, knock down the surface again. Step 8 Sanding. Now, finally, sand very lightly as needed with a sheet of fine 150 or 220 grit sandpaper. Do not use coarser grit paper except for problem areas like the meeting of two inside corners or narrow strips where you can't properly use a knife to prepare the surface. Use a sponge sanding block for the tough corners. Dust or vacuum the surface, shine a light again, and fill in any remaining imperfections with thinned mud firmly drawn down. You shouldn't have to sand again. Avoid sanding the paper surface of the drywall. Step 9. Walkabout. Together with your crew, do a walk through the home you have completed. Smile and congratulate each other on a job well done.